hans uh, uh, focus on basically two issues in my, in my short presentation. Uh, first, uh, a little bit about uh, the movement itself and in about its history. And then the, perhaps the most interesting issue here is the banning process of the Nordic resistance movement in Finland. It was banned just a few months ago, actually. So it is a very recent case and I suppose quite interesting case for the other Nordic chapters as well. Well, the Finnish chapter of the Nordic resistance movement was founded in, in 2008, so it's actually relatively old organizations already. Far-right organizations in Finland are typically not uh, last very, very many years. There are a few exceptions to that. And interesting also that uh, when it was founded in 2008, it actually the first contact with the, with the Nordic resistance movement, uh, movement uh, was made by a by an American organization, the Order. Uh, the founder of the Finnish Finnish organization actually was in contact contact with one Order member, and he then suggested that it, uh, that they should actually take contact with the Swedes, and then after that uh, that uh, they founded uh, an organizational chapter in Finland as well. Uh, the Finnish uh, Nordic Resistance Movement chapter uh, became quite soon actually uh, basically the most important neo-Nazi group in Finland uh, with also uh, most international contacts, uh, uh, most visible also they have been in the news uh, since at least for the last five years constant, constantly in the news. Uh, they started as a very small organization by 2014 or so, they had something like 20, 20 members, but then started to grow during the past five years. And the uh, last, last time, to, during the past few years, and they have had something like uh, around 100 activists. And this doesn't even include all the supporting members. Uh, they have uh, quite variety of backgrounds, of course, because it's uh, uh, grown to such, ex to such ex extent, but um, quite many of them still had some kind of a subcultural uh, background. So they, quite many of them have uh, been in the skinhead movement for several years already, before even the founding of the uh, organization, or they have some kind of other kind of uh, um, subcultural background. Finnish uh, chapter has been very active uh, in creating connections with uh, with foreign organizations. Of course, they had close uh, have had close collaboration with the Swedes. They sometimes uh, train together, uh, go to each other's demonstrations, and so on. But uh, they are also also quite early on had uh, very close connections with the National Action Organization in the in the United United Kingdom, which was actually later and also as a terrorist organization. And uh, interesting also that, uh, that uh, for the banning case is that uh, they also shared ideas about how to actually respond to the band and how to react, how to, how to uh, continue one's activities of, after the organization is banned. Well, some other relevant connections for the Finnish NRM are uh, in Germany, Twitterweg, and also NPD and especially its youth organization, they have been in Finland uh, quite often. Uh, last time, actually in last December, at least, Krita uh, Weg leader was uh, speaking in, in Helsinki. Greek Golden Dawn has been, of course, an example, example, exemplary organization for quite many uh, of far-right groups uh, in Europe and uh, even worldwide. Um, Casa Pound is a kind of interesting interesting case for the for, for the Finnish group, group because uh, they had actually connection with the Casa Pound even before they founded the Nordic Resistance Movement organization in Finland, and this is because one of one of the key members who is organizing Casa Pound's cultural activities and is currently leading leading the uh, Solidarity Front organization which supports Syria is actually half half Finnish person. Uh, regarding uh, the violent activities of the, of the Nordic resistance movement in Finland, uh, one should say that it, is, it has been uh, to some extent smaller scale than in 
what has happened in Sweden, there has been no known terrorist plots or anything like that, and even uh, also uh, violent classes or so, so on have been to some extent smaller, and it has not been that continuous, even, even if it happened, happened do, used to happen almost every year. Uh, most of these violent activities have been in the context of the uh, demonstrations uh, or street activism by, by the uh, Nordic resistance movement. As uh, Tura also referred to, they tend to uh, refer to these activities uh, as some kind of a defense, self-defense activities, actions which typically happen, happen after some kind of a provocation, although one has to say that, uh, that uh, uh, bar is quite low to start an attack, so very little provocation seems to have, have been followed by some kind of an attack. Uh, of the most notable violent attacks, there have been uh, 2013 here in Uvascula, uh, when library stabbing case, which uh, uh, started after one book presentation, uh, Nordic Resistance Movement members uh, I went to the local library and uh, then, then one stabbed one guardsman there. Uh, and then 2015, kind of follow up to this case was uh, was uh, riot and assault at the shopping mall here in Uvascula as well. Uh, the, those were the same persons who were actually actually involved both sides in, in that that uh, attack. And then 2016, there was in Helsinki a brutal assault, which also uh, later, later the victim of the assault died, as Tura mentioned also. And this is uh, this was an uh, important case because uh, uh, this kind of led to the process of uh, of uh, uh, banning the Nordic resistance movement in in Finland. And uh, just just uh, the court justified uh, basically the banning of the organization by recurring violent attacks. Uh, of the Nordic resistance movement and also how they praised their violent activities. They looks, looked like they celebrated and accepted uh, the violent activities, for example, this uh, brutal assault in 2016. And the ban was uh, last month confirmed by the Supreme Court in, in uh, Finland. So what are the consequences of the ban for the Nordic resistance movement in Finland? As uh, Chris actually said, about the Kristallnacht 2019 activities, the Finnish uh, <clears throat> Nordic resistance movement still seemed to have some kind of a link and uh, even collaboration with the, Nord the whole Nordic resistance movement, Scandinavian or Nordic movement. And uh, they took part in these, uh, these 2019 uh, attacks, vandal vandalism and so on, doing uh, some kind of graffiti at the synagogues and so on. And uh, as a kind of proof of coordination, I suppose this was ordered by the Swedish Nordic resistance movement leader by Simon Lindberg. But uh, so far there hasn't been actually not very much uh, sort of violent reactions to the band. They have, have not resorted to violence uh, to some extent than previously. Uh, during the pro pro court process, they have been only just, uh, well, minor classes at uh, demonstrations uh, against their political opponents or anti-fascist or whoever uh, was demonstrating against them. Uh, after the man, uh, Nordic resistance movement members have in Finland founded several new organization, organizations kind of to circumvent the man and some of these organizations have been investigated and uh, I think they are under evaluation by the prosecutor now if they actually illegally are continuing the activities of a terminated associ associations and breaching the, the Finnish Associations Act. And uh, probably one of, few of these groups will be banned later in Finland. That seems at least at the moment quite likely because it's quite obvious that they are continuing the activities of the, this banned organization. Uh, how they will for, uh, then act after after this ban? Well, this uh, this uh, founding of the new organization seems to be one one part of their post ban strategy and. Uh, they have indeed founded several organizations which actually suggest that, suggests that they would 
kind of create a more decentralized organizational form, which would be then eventually much more difficult to ban or even, the, even to follow or control by the police. And uh, uh, something Ture also mentioned, I think, uh, was that uh, some Finnish members had been had been active in the so-called accelerationist networks. Uh, some members have supported uh, this as a viable option for future activism, and uh, some have been active already before the ban, starting something like 2016 or so. Uh, within the uh, Iron March Forum, and uh, some have later joined some of the successor organization of the Atem Division and so on. So they have been uh, reacted to kind of to that, that way also to the ban. Uh, so they see that there's no more avenue for the political, political activism or, or the organizational uh, strategy. They should do some other things. Um, well, as a consequence of, of the ban, they have obviously much less resources at their disposal as the assets were frozen by the court and the web server was closed. This shows also in the activism, it's much, much more smaller scale right now. And also the number of members, they have lost quite many, many, many members since the ban. Some older activists have left the movement, and at least it looks like that. Uh, just a final note that uh, yesterday was uh, in, in Helsinki published by the Finnish security police, the uh, latest national security review, review which mentioned that uh, individuals or small groups supporting radical, radical Islamist or far-right ideology posed the greatest terrorist threat in Finland. And that they made it quite obvious that uh, this referred to the online activities, international networks of, of the, these groups and uh, I suppose it partly applies to what, what the Nordic resistance movement has done in Finland after they were banned. So, thank you.